So back in 2022, I bought this Waveshare board for a Compute Module 4. You can see I've got a Compute Module 5 on there at the moment. I've just got some standoffs on it and a base with some rubber feet, just because it's easier to put the NVMe drive in and out of it. As you can see, connectivity is pretty good. SD card slot here, got a couple of USB 2 slots, full-size HDMI, Ethernet, and so on. But they've sent me a newer board, which is properly designed for the Compute Module 5. So I asked what the advantages were on this new board when used with the Compute Module 5. So the old board lacked a display port. You can see this has got two display ports on it. And only one of these camera ports works on the CM5, but the new board supports two cameras. A big update going from USB 2 on the old board to USB 3.2 on the new board. So the old unit had an M.2 slot on the bottom for an NVMe drive. The new board doesn't, but what it does have is the faster PCIe connection. So we'll have a look at the difference in speed between those two. There's two more buttons on this one. I guess we'll see what those are in a minute. And we've got a proper Raspberry Pi 5 fan interface. This wasn't around with the old CM4s. You used to have to use GPIO pins, but the fact that this has got the official one, which supports loads of fans with temperature control, is really handy. And we have a real-time clock battery on this new board as well. Let's have a look at the website to show all of the features. I've just noticed this in the box, so it comes with some standoffs and some screws. So I booted up the old board with a Compute Module 5. This is currently running from an EMMC drive, but I've got an NVMe drive I can attach to the bottom because I want to test the speed differences and see how they run. So let's launch Raspberry Config. And I need to change the boot options or boot order. So I'm going to change it to NVMe. So OK and finish and reboot. So let's have a look for the specs. Oh, and I've been sent one of these as well, the CM5 PoE box, which I'll show in a later video, but it looks really cool. So the board is this one. So standard CM5 socket and color-coded Raspberry Pi 40 pin GPIO. I really like the colors. So the yellow is the three volt, the red is the five volt, and then the black are the earths. And I think it's just really handy. I use a little cardboard guide to show me which GPIO pins do which, but I really like this approach. So gigabit ethernet, PCIe slot, which works with Gen 3 speeds, USB 3.2, Type A times 2, USB 2 via 6 pin FFC connector. So you can add two extra USB 2 sockets, 5 volt, 4 pin PWM connector, that's the fan. And it works with 5 volt, 5 amp, which is what the Pi 5 works on. So more power to that board. So it says HDMI port times 2. But there is only one HDMI port, but we do have those two additional display stroke camera connectors, which can be used for either. SD card slot for compute module without EMMC drive. There's some close-up pictures here. You can see it running with two displays in this picture. So the little display has got the flat cable connector and a couple of cameras connected up at the same time. Right, let's do the speed test. So if we go Diagnostics and launch that and run tests. OK, so no surprise that it passed. Let's do show log and I'll do three tests. So the best random read speed, 107, 105, 106. So it was the first one. Pretty consistent overall, though. So let's get rid of those two and let's save that and shut this down. And let's swap all this around, so switch that off. Fits into this nicely. This is the official Raspberry Pi rubber base. And if I flip this off, and pop that onto the new board. I think I'll use this 52 Pi one. So PCIe cable in place. And let's sit it on top of the GPIOs to power it. And let's pop this tiny Raspberry Pi NVMe on here and boot up. I haven't had to do anything to this copy of Raspberry Pi OS for either board. Both have worked straight away. So the first test 
is actually very similar. So we got 390676 versus 393019. So actually the new board is slightly slower uh, and 92695 versus 95533 and 107084 versus 107436. So yeah, uh, the fastest test on the CM4 board was actually faster than the tests I've just run. Now I haven't enabled PCIe 3 speeds yet. I think it defaults to PCIe 2, but let's just do the three tests anyway. So let's have a look. Now I've got all three tests. So I take the fastest random read speed, so 106, 107. So it's this one. So at the moment, the older board is faster, but PCIe 3 needs to be enabled. So let's save that first of all. And let's try it from Raspi Config. So let's open a terminal, Raspi Config, Advanced Options, PCIe Speed, yeah, Gen 3 enabled and yes, and OK. And that will need to restart. Okay, so even on the first test, I can see that it's much faster. Uh, so let's call up those results again. So the fastest before, 393019, has gone up to 764268. It's a much faster. Uh, random write speed, 103044 from 95533, so a bit faster. Uh, and random read speed has got quite a lot faster, 144991. From 107436. But I'll do the three tests anyway because I've only done one test. So these are the PCIe 3 tests on the new board. So fastest random read speed is this one at 16260, the middle one in this test. Again, pretty, pretty uh, consistent. So this is a listing for an older CM4 board, and it's not the one I've got because this has got a real time clock on it as well. Uh, it's more expensive than the CM5 board, I guess, because they're not going to be making as many anymore. Uh, but if we have a look, I don't think it mentions NVMe anywhere. So if I do Control F in the page and type in NVMe, yeah, it's only just mentioned in the comments, but nowhere does it mention NVMe. But it definitely works with NVMe for me. Let's see if it supports PCIe 3 speeds. So if I shut this down. So we're back on the old board, uh, which wasn't advertised as PCIe 3, and I've started it up with PCIe 3 enabled. Let's have a look at the results. Well, on the first test, the random read speed is actually quicker, 173375 versus 162620. The sequential write speed is slower, uh, and the random write speed is faster on the older board. But that's interesting. Uh, I mean, obviously at the time, three years ago when this board came out, we were CM4, so we weren't talking about PCIe. But it's obviously a capable board. That connection is capable of PCIe 3 speeds. Whether it can sustain that, whether it's going to be reliable over time, I don't know because it's not documented. But uh, it's interesting to see it getting those good speeds. Let's run two more tests to get the result. Okay, so that's all the tests done. So fastest random read speed is with the same result here, that 173375. So if we pick, but this has also got a faster random write speed and a faster sequential, yeah. So I'll pick the middle one in this test. Yeah, the older board has given me the fastest test result. As I say, I can't say whether it's designed for PCIe 3 or whether it can sustain that. The new one will be running to Raspberry Pi uh, Compute Module 5 standards because obviously since that previous board came out, we've had all the official specifications and what it should be to run PCIe. So let's save that. I'll put this in the description if you want to read through them more in more detail. So thanks very much to Waveshare for sending me this to test. It's a really nice update with the fan support, the USB 3 support, PCIe isn't just about NVMe drives, you also can run the Raspberry Pi AI hat, which you wouldn't be able to do on this older CM4 board. But uh, yeah, a really nice addition to their range, and I look forward to testing the PoE box, which looks really cool.
really solid. Uh, but this old board, still really nice. So nice to have that NVMe drive connected on the bottom as well. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.